So the next person I'd like to introduce is Naveen. And I was introduced to him by my friend Harpal, and she's been running a kindness cafe here. I don't know if anyone's popped into the kindness cafe, but that's a little movement that she started. And um, uh, she said, you've got to meet this guy, Naveen. Have you ever met him? She's like, no, I haven't. I've kind of heard about him, and you've got to meet him, and I'm going to meet him. And uh, we had a meeting just a few weeks ago, and... Um, yeah, uh, you may have read in the description and stuff. He actually built a solar-powered tuk-tuk. So we've, this is the second tuk-tuk uh, story we're hearing today. And uh, incredibly, he managed to drive it from India uh, all the way through to London. So he's going to be sharing his story. But not only is he a fantastic engineer and a very kind person, but just if you get the chance to speak to him, you can just feel his humility and his kindness and his desire to make the world a better place. And you can really feel it when you meet him. So ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause to Naveen. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and thanks to uh, Samash and his team for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk about my project. And uh, I had this dream when I was young, as young as I was probably 10 years old, uh, that I wanted to travel from uh, India to UK. I heard a lot of stories from my teachers and uh, read a lot of stories about these adventurers who have traveled across from Europe to India. I was always fascinated by those stories. I used to uh, put myself in their shoes to uh, feel about how would it be to experience those uh, journeys and to see those cultures. And uh, yeah, then there was a seed which was actually sown into me when I was 10 years old. And it was in year 2010. 2010, I started my journey from Australia to UK. I wanted to do this all by road as much as I can. And I did pretty well uh, doing some odd jobs and uh, spending my uh, savings here and there. I, but when I came to India, that was my halfway point, one picture actually changed my due course of my travel. And that was this picture. When I came to India, uh, it was like halfway point. I saw this uh, uh, beautiful girl who was covered with a uh, scarf. She was doing it for... Uh, uh, preventing herself from pollution and when I saw this picture it stuck to me that my dream is actually causing pollution as well and that and suddenly my whole travel felt like a hollow thing the whole journey it was just like a hollow thing uh, I didn't have any purpose or I didn't find any purpose so I decided to give it a break and to see how I can do it further how I can travel from India to UK and what I can change uh, during this process, I was thinking of uh, one thing to travel from uh, to travel to make a travel with a zero emission vehicle, but I didn't know how I would start, what I would do, and then I found these things in India. <laughs> 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 and this uh, tuk tuk uh, is an Indian icon, um, as many of you know, and this is one of the major polluting factors in India. Transport, uh, it's a two stroke and not very well maintained. So I decided why not take the most polluting vehicle uh, for Indian conditions and convert it into a zero emission vehicle and use it for my journey. And that was how my uh, story began uh, in 2012. I, so that was my zero emission to, to travel. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, The, and the pillars of this travel were basically uh, build, travel, and inspire for me. So I wanted to build my own tuk-tuk and travel in it from uh, India to all the way to uh, UK and, and to inspire. Uh, when I say inspire, I wanted to ins uh, inspire young generations about uh, sustainable lifestyles and sustainable living, importance of sustainable li uh, living. So, okay, it's fine. And now coming to the build part. I had a lot of challenges uh, coming from uh, India. Uh, we have challenges like, uh, I face challenges like uh, lack of knowledge, lack of resources, and of course, lack of finance. Uh, but you know, 
it was wonderful uh, during this process i uh, three it took me three years three and a half years to make three prototypes and all with local mechanics and local garage people not many resources on the streets um, it was just that we had a uh, hope uh, we had a, this vision to do it and one of, during this process, one of the biggest lessons I learned was from um, a six-year-old girl, um, uh, Kritika, uh, who's raising her hand second from the uh, far right. Uh, so she, she actually taught me the lesson of patience and persistence. Uh, so I used to do, I quit my regular job and started doing a part-time badminton coaching in a near, near club. Club nearby, and then uh, one day, this girl, Kritika, she has um, her skills for motor skills were really, really uh, bad for a six year old, for a normal six year old. So every day it was my duty to throw her shuttles at her and hope that one day she will hit it. You know, it took, <laughs> it took, me, it took me six weeks and thousands of shuttles. You know, every day I like, you know, I just go and throw at her. And hope one day she'll touch it, and you know, <laughs> and it was, it was, uh, you know, you know, next it happens. So happens that you know when you start training, you don't believe that she'll gonna hit it, and but one day it all changed, and that day was when she actually hit it, and that moment, uh, we look, we stared at each other, and we both knew what it meant, and it was then she was so happy, excited, she jumped around the court. And that actually showed me how important it is to be persistent and patient. You know, I was thinking that I began to run the moment I was born. I forgot how I started to uh, learn to walk. That was the biggest lesson I learned from the six-year-old uh, girl. And the next uh, thing uh, in this build process, we finally made our tuk-tuk from the blue tuk-tuk that you saw earlier. Now we we made it really colorful in a village in uh, uh, Kerala. Uh, and we had a huge celebration before we were about to leave. Uh, one day before uh, we were leaving, we invited like uh, uh, these are MPs, a member of parliaments from and uh, local police officials. And about 400, 500 people came around, media came around uh, to celebrate with us. It was uh, fantastic because we had, the vehicle was working and all the test results were great. And the next, very next day, it so happened that I, uh, when we started our journey, it failed in first one kilometer. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it was very disappointing because, you know, you had this huge expectation of the people who were there one day before, and, and the media was there, and the next day when you started, it just, yeah, you, I started contemplating that if I have to continue this journey anymore because I've already spent three and a half years, I've been talking like a madman that I want to do this and people, and now they see that it's just broken in one kilometer. <laughs> and it then, you know, when I was thinking, I was contemplating to leave this project, I went back, we pushed this back to the garage, and then I, we, took, we took a break, and uh, next day, the day after, I, I came down to the garage to see what's, what I should do, or. Two people came up to me, two people who were helping me to do it, and they, they, I could see that they had this, uh, they had sorrow in their eyes, for, uh, sorry, uh, sorry for me in their eyes. They felt really sorry, and uh, which I, I could not really say. I mean, um, it was very hard because I was really low, low myself, and I felt that I was let down. Uh, I let down all the team, all the people. They asked me. Um, do you, Naveen, do you know why are we uh, involved in this project? I said, no, please tell me. They said, even though we work hard in our, uh, in this, by working hard in this, uh, this job, in a garage, we can never ever go to these wonderful places you always talk about. So it would be, if we work in this project, our work and our soul will see for us what you're seeing. So that was a very beautiful, powerful statement which these people have told me. And then I thought, I cannot go back. I cannot leave this project anymore. Suddenly I felt I was not alone anymore. It's a bit distorted, but yeah. Uh, I was not al uh, alone anymore. 
this my dream has rubbed onto other people and it's the whole combined hopes and souls which is going to be traveling uh, with me and my tuk tuk finally this and i'm so proud we work, we started working on this tuk tuk again the after it broke down and i'm so proud with this team that um tuk tuk hasn't break uh, hasn't broken down for 14000 kilometers it made safe it was absolutely no problem at all this year uh, earlier this year it's on 8th of february uh, 2016 i started my journey this is my tuk tuk and this was in iran and during this journey uh, i have learned a lot of things and experience i was very blessed to experience a lot of things uh, before I, i'll just tell you about my tuk tuk this because it runs on solar and electric it can only go up to 80 km per charge 60 to 80 km per charge so and then i have to recharge my batteries with a normal plug point or a wait for sun <laughs> and <laughs> and you know you know also so in a day effectively i can go up to 120 to 160 kilometers maximum so which actually given me it's on a very positive side it actually gives me an opportunity to meet people at every 80 kilometers normally which you would not get it if you're going on a fast car you know uh, so i was very blessed to do such kind of a journey it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to do imagine 14000 kilometers and every 80 kilometers <laughs> so uh and in, during this travel i have learned a uh, lot of things but two of the most important things that i have learned in this in this uh, travel journey was once first thing was about perceptions before i started this journey i had a lot of these perceptions i had um, filters in my head about different cultures how they behave how what the people are and somehow and from the day one all my perceptions were challenged every day it was a challenging uh, for example iran i had heard about iran to be very unsafe but you know the i have never experienced such kind of hospitality when i was in iran it was a, one of the best hospital countries i've ever been and people used to welcome me with their open arms used to give me amazing smiles into the houses feed me pack my lunch for next day and then leave me so it was very that actually this lesson um, made me open up more open up to give to accept as things they are so it it made my uh, it actually i started seeing things in a different way and the second lesson in my journey was about greed i during the starting of my journey i was very calculative about rationing my food i was you know people were offering me food donating me food and i was just busy in uh, busy in collecting this food and making a big warehouse in the back of my truck i was i was you know i was I, i was sort of i was hoping for the worst i was hoping that one day everything will go bad in the world and i will have food and which i don't have to pay money for that food and you know in the process i was just having food like tomatoes and uh, dry fruits filled but one day it actually hurt me the day when i was actually uh, obviously my uh, tuk tuk doesn't have a fridge uh, so, <laughs> so i was uh, putting some of the food to the bin into the bin and you know that action of putting my food into the bin was not just mere physical but actually it hurt me because the love that was given uh, the food with which these people have given me was going into the bin that act actually uh, triggered me saying hey why do i really need so much of food if i am not even using it so that actually uh, made me more conscious about to ta- to take what i really need to survive and that also brought me uh, brought into me two changes one is it took out a lot of anxiety of my head and i started enjoying every meal and every moment so this greed was sort of uh, stopping me to enjoy my journey now finally uh, in 4 uh, weeks ago i reached london and uh, i finished my journey in bbc 
headquarters and uh, uh, housing something, <laughs> World Broadcast Center. Um, yeah, it was a wonderful experience, and I was true. Uh, and during this journey, I also did go to a lot of schools and colleges to talk about uh, my journey and uh, talk about sustainability. Kids absolutely love it. They the first thing they uh, they like this cute little thing, beautiful thing, and second thing they like is the the whole journey aspect itself to see how I was fascinated when I was a kid. Uh, similarly, they get fascinated by the whole land journey of India to UK. And third thing is they really get interested is when um, uh, it, this whole journey is without a petrol. It just opens up their mindset to start thinking about, hey, this is possible. And uh, one such example, I was in a school in Delhi. Uh, and I went to a school and uh, given my presentation and the, one of the uh, parents uh, came out after the presentation. He said, uh, thanks, Levin, thanks for coming to our school. And uh, I said, okay, it's no problem. Uh, can you please share your uh, thing? And he said, my son till now he wanted a fast car like, like a Lamborghini. But now he wants a solar car and he thinks it's better for his future. Aww. So that kind of small stories actually made me go even further. And I'm still, I um, uh, hope that I've inspired a lot of young kids and uh, I wish I would do it uh, even more. Uh, in conclusion, uh, a lot of my friends were not happy with what I'm doing in terms of they were always asking me, friends, people, they always ask me, why are you doing this? Is, it there, is there any, are you going to put up a factory? Are you going to put up, a, you know, are you going to be a travel writer? Uh, but you know they get disappointed because I don't have any of those answers what they were expecting. I have, you know, I was just doing it for my pure joy, pure happiness of traveling, and um, it was a dream to fulfill my dream. And uh, for me, happiness or this journey meant to learn and to give. I was learning how to be uh, sustainable, how to um, accept things as they are, and to give smiles and to give uh, mindset about sustainability. This was my happiness. And, and I'm very thankful for all the people who have helped me through this journey to fulfill my dream. And yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for listening.